What's up guys and welcome to today's video where I will be sharing my traditional Irish apple tart recipe. Now jumping straight in, you will need 225 grams of plain flour, 125 grams of butter, about four large cooking apples, about two tablespoons, 30-ish grams of corn flour, five to six tablespoons of sugar, and five to six tablespoons of really cold water, ice water if you can. So firstly, let's get on to making our pastry. So the first thing that we're going to do, as always, is sieve our flour. This removes any lumps, make sure we have a really nice, light and airy mixture. I'm going to cube my butter and add it straight into the flour. And what we want to create here is a homogeneous sand-like mixture and it takes a bit of time. So firstly, I would just start chopping the butter into the mixture before I use my hands. This just breaks up those larger chunks of butter even more and coats them in flour. So while I go ahead and start rubbing in the butter into my flour, don't forget to hit subscribe and make sure that your notification bell is turned on so that you don't miss any more of my videos. So you can see here that I'm only rubbing in with my fingers. I'm not allowing any of the mixture to touch off the palms of my hands as this is the warmest part of my hand. And if you start to warm up your pastry, you'll end up with a pastry that's still delicious, but might be a little bit more on the greasy side. So keep rubbing in, keep rubbing in, and eventually you'll see that it will start to look a little bit more like sand and you won't get rid of every single lump, but as close to a fine sandy mixture as you can get is perfect. Next, we're going to start by adding a small amount of water at a time in order to bring the pastry dough together. So I'll grab a clean butter knife and use the back of the butter knife to start bringing the mixture together by cutting through the center and making sure that I'm incorporating as best I can. Again, a process that will take you a little bit of time, so don't panic if things don't start to come together immediately. My only caveat will be to make sure that you don't add too much water in one go. You can always add more, but it is really difficult, if not impossible, to take it away and you could end up ruining your pastry. All in all, I used about four tablespoons of ice cold water. And you don't actually need this pastry, but here I'm just using my hands to bring the pastry together into a nice ball. Our next step then will be to leave the pastry to chill in the fridge for about an hour. Chilling your pastry and allowing it that time to refrigerate is another key step to making really lovely flaky pastry for your tart. And as you know in my house, we don't use plastic wrap, so a lunchbox works absolutely perfectly for this and avoids a ton of waste. So after that hour, or while your pastry is chilling in the fridge, I'm going to go ahead and butter a plate. Now this is the dish that I always use for baking my apple tarts. If you have a pastry dish, go ahead and use it, that's absolutely fine. But traditionally, this is how my granny would have made apple tarts and how essentially everybody that I know makes apple tarts. And you don't want to scrimp on the butter because you absolutely do not want your pastry to stick to the plate. After my hour is up, I want to make a top and a bottom for my pastry. So I'm going to weigh it, see what weight I have, and essentially try and divide them into equal portions. I like to make the lid of my tart just slightly bigger than the base because it will have to extend over your apples and so I don't want to have to roll it out too thin. I went ahead and floured my work surface and now I'm going to roll out the top and bottom of my pastry. If you haven't rolled pastry before, it is tricky, it is fiddly, so don't panic if it starts to break at the edges. Just keep working with it. Another top tip for making really good pastry is to roll only in one direction and lift your pastry up after each roll and do about a quarter turn. Keep doing this, keep flouring underneath your pastry to make sure that nothing sticks to your work surface and keep working with it until you get a disc of pastry that is the size of your baking dish or your plate. I'm then going to take a fork and just prick the base of the pastry. This will prevent the pastry from bubbling up and it will allow any steam to rise up and through the base of the pastry. You might wish to bake your pastry blind. Personally, I don't do this and have never done this with an apple tart, but the option is always there for you. A traditional tart may have a little bit of a soggy bottom as they say, but that is not a problem. 
and I'm going to repeat the exact same steps with my top lid. And again, I'm just going to make this slightly bigger and you can test that by just placing your plate on top of the disc that you've created and making sure that it'll fit. And at this stage, I haven't actually peeled my apples, so I'm going to go ahead and do that while I allow my pastry to just chill in the fridge while I'm going through this process. So probably chilled for another 10 or 15 minutes. Some people have really lovely methods for chopping their apples, but for me, as long as they're in a relatively nice shape, I'm absolutely fine with how they look. Much like my soda bread, a traditional Irish apple tart is very rustic. It's very rough and ready, but absolutely delicious. And a top tip that I learned to avoid some of that juice flowing out and making your pastry overly soggy is to mix in some corn flour into your apples once you have cut them all up. Corn flour is often used as a thickening agent and it works wonders for soaking up any of those juices that will inevitably leak from your apples just by the nature and how much moisture is in an apple. And now on to assembly. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Just get your apples into the middle of that pastry. We wanna get this into the oven as fast as possible. So I add about three teaspoons of sugar, which adds just enough sweetness to cut through the sourness of the apples so that you have that lovely balance. And before we add our lid on, I'm just going to dampen the edges of the pastry very lightly as this will allow the lid to form a seal. Just be careful when you're placing your lid on. You don't want to be too rough with it. You can, of course, move it around as I am here, make sure that it is nice and even. But if you get too rough with this pastry, you run the risk of tearing it and you absolutely don't want to do that after all the effort that you've put into making this lovely buttery flaky pastry. Feel free to decorate the edges however you like. You can crimp them together between your fingers, but I really like to just take a fork and press down lightly, pull outwards and create that lovely pattern from the fork. Poke a few holes in the top of your tart, again, to allow any steam to escape. So you can see that we have a little bit of extra pastry or overhang on the sides of the tart. And to deal with these, I'm just going to lift the tart up in one hand, take a knife and point that knife at an angle towards myself and just gently work off those pastry cuttings. I'm going to whisk up an egg just to give this a lovely egg wash on the top for some color. You can also use milk for this if you like, or skip it. I just find it a really nice way to tell when my tart is finished. Pop your tart in the oven, firstly for 10 minutes at 190 degrees before turning the heat down to 180 degrees, again in a fan oven, and allowing it to bake for 20 to 25 minutes or until you see a lovely golden crust. And there it is in all its apple tart glory. I just think it is the most stunning, easy crowd pleaser, and I can't wait to dig into it. Just look how thin and lovely and buttery and flaky that pastry is. If you do try this yourself, please don't forget to tag me in all your recreations. Please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and please don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any more of my upcoming videos. And I really look forward to seeing you back on my channel again. Bye.